What's up, everybody? Charlie Marlowe here, jumping back on to talk a little baseball. I did the video yesterday where I was basically bringing up the fact that, hey, it takes two to tango. The Cardinals got to put out great offers, but also the players want to come here. I thought I was pretty fair with the, uh, with the video, and I think a decent amount of people in the comments agreed with me. But uh, this is one of the videos lately, one of the few where I got a lot of pushback. I, I saw a lot of comments disagreeing with me, calling me a Cardinals apologist and being a shill for the front office and all that. So I want to uh, explain in detail a little more what I was thinking because I think I think your guys' criticism is not unfair. But then also, I think sometimes you have people who who watch on YouTube. I think if you've if you've listened on Hot Take Central, we talk about the Cardinals all the time. I mean, for years and years and years. I think you have an idea of how I feel about baseball. Basically, what I was saying yesterday in the video. I was, I was not trying to take the Cardinals front office off the hook for basically getting to this spot that a lot of guys don't necessarily want to come here. Now, what I said yesterday was sometimes it's about role. Sometimes it's about the city. Look, some guys want to play in San Diego. Some dudes want the bright lights of New York, LA, whatever it is, weather, all these things. Let's be honest, St. Louis doesn't have the greatest reputation, although I do think we have the, the best fans in baseball. I know we joke about that beef, but it's true. But this gets back to, I think, why also some guys don't necessarily want to come here. The, the great thing about the beef and baseball heaven and all that, it's tied to the winning. It's tied to the great tradition of the St. Louis Cardinals that goes back 100 years, okay? So when the Cardinals are winning, and you see these players who, who come here over the years as visitors, they go, man, it's unbelievable. We get standing ovations, we make a great play, they give us an ovation, they love their players, there's great history. Anytime you go to Bush Stadium for an opening day, you see how the other team watches it and they're probably thinking, well, hell, this is awesome, dude. We don't do it like this in some of these other cities. But the point is, and I think, you know, I didn't really get to this yesterday, um, but I will today because I think a lot of your guys' criticism is fair, is it's the front office's fault that the Cardinals are now in a spot where this is not as attractive of a place to come. And that's because of how the Cardinals have dropped in the standings recently. Okay? So the baseball heaven and the fans, it's all great. But the reason it's great is because it's attached to the winning that the Cardinals have always done. And I've said this a million times, 11 to 15 magical years for the St. Louis Cardinals, magical years. And so if you look at those teams though, those were not teams that went crazy with free agency. So think about those teams. And you can go back to 06 as well, but Albert drafted, Yachty drafted, Wayno drafted by the Braves, but traded very early and developed as a Cardinal. So let's look at the 11 team. I got here in 08. So, I mean, I, I know the six team, and I was actually working in Michigan covering the Tigers, but I know a lot more about the 11 team because I was here covering that team. But just kind of go around, around the diamond of that team. A lot of guys drafted and developed. Some smart additions. I mean, Chris Carpenter, um, so we're going Kyle Loesch um, on these teams. Um, you had a bunch of young arms from 11 to 15 developed. So you can start out with just go Lance Lynn. And, and I'm not just going 11 here, but Lance Lynn, Michael Waka, Trevor Rosenthal, Shelby Miller, Carlos Martinez on those teams, um, 11 to 15 that were really, really good. Uh, David Freeze obviously was acquired via trade. So you had enough guys homegrown. You made some really savvy trades. Even somebody like Carpenter who, who was hurt and was underperforming. You had all those reclamation projects, remember, for the Dave Duncan years. That's another thing. You had an elite coaching staff. Dave Duncan would turn these pitchers 
who, who didn't do great elsewhere, maybe through the four-seam fastball, bring him here, pitch to contact, throw the two-seamer, throw the sinker, and uh, all of a sudden these guys were, were a lot better. So you had a coaching strategic advantage. But that was just a tangent. That's not really what I was trying to talk about today. But look at some of the guys that got the Cardinals over the top in those years. So Lance Berkman was unbelievable in 2011. But why did Lance Berkman want to come here? Lance Berkman saw how great the Cardinals were for all those years, played against them with the Astros. And I don't want to call the Cardinals a super team. That's not fair. But for a while there, look at 09. In 09, they add DeRosa. They add Matt Holiday. Even John Smoltz comes at the end. Now, it didn't work out. They ran into uh, Manny Ramirez and the Dodgers. But 11, somebody like Lance Berkman chose to sign with the Cardinals on a two-year deal. The guy wanted to win a World Series, and he felt the St. Louis Cardinals were a great place for him to come and potentially win a World Series. And he did. And then what happened the next year? Carlos Beltran did the same thing. Now, Carlos Beltran didn't end up winning a World Series, but he was great here for a couple years. Remember how amazing he was in, in 13? And Carlos Beltran was really, really good for a couple years, but Carlos Beltran came to the Cardinals because he felt like this was a great spot to win, and it was. He wanted to win a World Series. He didn't win a World Series, but look at those couple years, 12, 13. You get to an NLCS, you get to a World Series. My point is, back then, this is, this is 10 years ago, but guys would want to come to St. Louis to win their championship because they felt the Cardinals had all the ingredients to win and maybe they were the last piece that was needed in, in the case of somebody like a Lance Berkman. So it's on the front office that that is no longer the case. So those people criticizing me yesterday, it's all good. And I, and I think you're right. And I think I gave the Cardinals a B. Maybe that's a little too high. Now, also, the winter isn't done, okay? I think the Cardinals are going to add a, a significant reliever. I still think a trade, I think trading Carlson makes sense. We'll see what happens. But I understand if, if you say B is a, is, a, is a good grade and maybe they deserve a C. I, I even understand that because I said before the winter starts that the Cardinals needed to add two starting pitchers better than Miles Michaelis. I don't feel like they've done that. They've only added one, in my opinion, which is Sonny Gray. So I understand if you think the Cardinals' grade should be, should be worse um, and again, let's wait until they're done. I think they're for the most part done though. So that's part of this. Again, I'm repeating myself, but I do think they'll add a reliever. But my point is the reason I brought up Berkman and Beltron is that is no longer the case in my opinion, that teams want to come here to St. Louis to, to win. I think people know the Cardinals can win, but it has been a downward trend. If you go back to 11 to 15 when they were great, it's been a downward trend since then. The, the Matheny years when they didn't make the playoffs. And then, so 2019, you do win a playoff series. Let's give them credit. But then you get to the NLCS, Washington Nationals, and you just get freaking broomed. You weren't even in that series. It was over before it started. So it's been now, what, four years, though, since the Cardinals won a playoff series. And even that year, 2019, I don't think anybody really thought the Cardinals were a legit contender to win the World Series. I'm not trying to take anything away from them from beating the Braves, but I don't feel like they really had a great chance to win the World Series. And that was 2019. They haven't won a playoff series since. Last year, they don't make the playoffs. They lose 91 games, which I also think is, their team wasn't 91, what did I say? They lose 91 games. Their, their team was not a 91 loss team, right? They were about 10 games under, they get to the deadline and they trade everybody away. So then they become a team that's 20 below. Um, but look, obviously, if you keep those guys, you probably stay, uh, you know, 10 games below 500. If you would have added, which made no sense, but if you would have added players, you probably get to 500, like they had in previous, previous couple of years, you add pitchers at the deadline. But what I'm trying to say is the Cardinals have kind of lost that loving feeling when it comes to being a place you come to to win. I'm not saying they, they can't be back and they won't win in 2024. That's not what I'm saying. But, but this is no longer the destination, the Cardinals devil magic that we had 11 to 15. So BFIB is great. Baseball heaven is great. Standing ovations are great. But if you're a team that's never going to give the, the highest dollar amount, and, and that's another part. You guys were criticizing me. Look, at the end of the day, you can blow a guy out of the water with an offer. Okay? And that's how sometimes you have to get a deal done. The Cardinals don't do that. They've tried 
you know, Hayward, David Price, the $200 million contracts, they didn't sign here, those guys. But the Cardinals usually don't try to swim in those waters. The Wilson Contreras deal, five years, $87.5 million is the biggest contract that they've given out for somebody that didn't play for them. Holidays was bigger. You have extensions for guys like Paul Goldschmidt. But I do think it's on the front office that the Cardinals have lost that magic where we're no longer looked upon as an elite winning franchise for the last five years. And, and I'm not saying they suck. I'm not saying they're Pittsburgh. I'm not saying they're the Oakland A's. That's not what I'm saying. But they're kind of more in the middle. They're in the middle for payroll. They're in, in the middle or, or towards, let's say, the top third for a team you think you can go to to win, but it's not the same. It's not the same as it was 10 years ago. So I don't think you're going to get these guys in their last couple of years to sign a deal to want to come here to win a World Series. The Cardinals have to reprove it to baseball that they can get back to that. And if you're a player and the Cardinals are not going to give out the biggest contracts, what's the point of coming here? Honestly, like I'm not, I'm not trying to be a hater, but you know, it's St. Louis, Missouri, which I live here. It's great. It's not the greatest weather. It's in the middle of the country. Uh, it's, it's not it's not the beach. You're not going to give out the biggest deals. And right now, you're not really winning even close to an elite level. Even when you made the playoffs the last several years before last season, so go back to 22-21-20, 20, you got first-round exits. Padres, the COVID year, one-game playoff Dodgers. You get swept by the Philadelphia Phillies, and you run into two smoking aces in Aaron Nola and... Um, Zach Wheeler. So the fact that the Cardinals have lost that that winning pedigree, that is on the front office. They were the ones that allowed that to go away. And, and I don't think you can replicate 11 to 15. That wasn't going to go on forever. But I think they've really fallen a long way since then. Because all those years, they were legitimate World Series contenders. Either won the World Series, got to the World Series, got to the NLCS... Even 15, you won 100 games, and you ran into the Cubs. The Cubs started their run in 15 and obviously won it the next year in 16. But even those years the Cardinals made the playoffs, I mentioned, so 20, 21, 22. I think most people, for being fair, they won a very watered-down National League Central. They got to 90 wins or close to it, but not a lot of teams in the Central really try to compete. You're usually going up against really one team that tries for the whole season. Um, I mean, look, it looks like the Brewers are already freaking not going not gonna to really compete this next year. We haven't even started the year. We're three months away. It looks like the, the Cubs might be the only team that, that really will compete with the Cardinals. Cubs haven't even really spent a ton yet, but I think they will. Pirates, Reds, up and coming. We'll see what happens. But I think it's fair to say those Cardinal teams, you, you thought they were also better than they were because they won – a poor division in the Central, beat up on a bunch of teams, and they got to play these elite teams in the playoffs, and they usually were were swept or, or lost very quickly. So that's all in the front office. It's all in the front office for basically kind of losing that luster over the last uh, especially five years. And the biggest part of that, in my opinion, I've talked about it a million times, though, is no longer developing your own players, especially pitching. Those years, they were great. I mentioned all the names. I think I forgot Kevin Segrist, but all those guys that led them to those wins and those deep runs, most of those pitchers, you had just bullpen guys. Um, you had you had starters. You had guys that you drafted, you developed. We're not seeing that on the pitching side. We're seeing that on the position player side. Let's give the Cardinals credit for that, but not on the pitching side. And that's why probably the, the worst thing the Cardinals have ever done or at least recently, the worst the worst thing was the Ozuna trade because Sandy Alcantara, Zach Gallen looked like guys that probably would have, would have gotten extension and pitched here for about a decade. And if you're the Cardinals and you're never going to give out $200 million contracts or they're either not going to be accepted or you're rarely going to give them out, you're never going to swim in the $300 million waters. If you don't draft and develop your own players and pitchers that stay here, you're not going to be able to really compete at an elite level. And that's why, look, the whole dynamic of the Cardinals the last four or five years totally change if Sandy Alcantara and Zach Gallen are in the rotation. And I understand why the Cardinals made that move with Ozuna, but it was a terrible move. 
Randy Rosarena so far. It looks like a terrible, terrible trade. And I just think the Cardinals' margin for error, it's tough to overcome those type of bad deals. And they really haven't overcome them in terms of, of really winning at an elite level in the last several years. So hopefully that cleared some of these things up. And I also think, look, the deals that they made that ended up being bad, I think that also created a paralysis through analysis of the last several years of, of John Mozeliak and the Cardinals not wanting to do anything. I think they were so gun shy of not wanting to, to trade away the next Rosarena, not wanting to trade away the next Alcantara or Gallon, that you, you look at this roster now and it seems like they're afraid to make moves. And once they do, for somebody like Tyler O'Neill, there's no value left. And the guy has one year left of control. I mean, look at Carlson. I feel like it's time to move on from Carlson. And what, maybe they move on next year. He probably has no trade value. Still, I don't think their roster makes a lot of sense. You have too many guys that are that are repeats in a uh, in Edmund and a, and a Donovan. Who the hell is going to play the outfield? I would move on from Carlson. And I like, I like Tommy Edmund better as your everyday second baseman. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I just want to jump on. Hopefully that answers some of your questions. I, uh, I might have been too nice to the Cardinals, but I think a B... I think a B is fair. I mean, if you want to say C, C plus, I can't really argue too much with you. But I didn't want people to think like I was trying to give the Cardinals front office a pass because I'm not. And I've said for years and years and years, the Cardinals have to go for it every once in a while. They they seemingly never go for it. It seems like they are happy most years. If you get to 3 million fans, close to 90 wins, have a shot at the central, Get into playoffs, roll the dice, see what happens. But most of the time, you're not gonna you're not gonna run deep. You're not gonna win series like that. I think the Cardinals have won a couple times like that in six and eleven, so they probably feel like they can do it again. But it's it's not very likely. I, I think most times on paper, people look at the Cardinals teams in twenty twenty one twenty two and go, eh, we're excited. It's the playoffs, but uh, they're not the favorites. And we saw what happened with. Uh, with first round exits all those years. And then last year they really fall off. They really fall off. So hopefully I added some context to what I said yesterday for those that were criticizing me. And you know what? It's all good if you want to criticize me. I don't think I've ever been known as a shill for the organization. I've said forever, the Cardinals, they are, they're, they're so reasonable. They are so risk averse. They run that team like a hedge fund and uh, they run it so businesslike I think every once in a while you just want to have that riverboat gambler. You want to have that Mark Cuban type mentality of, all right, let's just want, let's go for it this one year. Let's go for it. If there's ever a year to go for it, isn't it 2024 after a horrible 2023 where your fan base is pissed? Cardinals fans are as pissed as I've ever seen them. And I've been here now, what, 16 years. So I think Cardinal Nation just wants a little bit of, a little bit of gamble every once in a while. Okay, do we have to be, do we have to be so okay, this is our portfolio. This is what we want to do. Every once in a while, they just want to be like, hey, dude, let's just go for it. Let's sign a couple dudes. Let's let's do it. Let's go for it, Cardinals. So there you go. All right, I went longer than I expected, but hopefully I answered some questions or that was kind of in a response to, to many people who disagreed with my video yesterday. Um, but yeah, hey, what's Bill DeWitt worth? What did that come out the other day? What was it? I don't even remember. Was it three, four billion? Uh, he's doing fine, okay? The valuation of the team is incredible, all right? These guys don't feel sorry for these owners. Even if year to year, there's sometimes they say, okay, well, okay, here's what we're operating. Here's our revenue for this particular year. You buy a team for what? What do they buy it for? 150 million and it's worth 3 billion or something like that. So don't don't feel sorry for these owners, which is why I always, I always in a tie, tie goes the runner, to me, tie goes the players. And uh, hey man, if, if DeWitt, Mosellock, and the Cardinals don't step up in 2024, I, I think you're going to start to see even more people not showing up, not buying tickets and all that because the fan base is pissed right now. All right, so there you go. I'll jump on again here if anything happens, but uh, just wanted to talk a little more because I, I did see more, more comments than usual of people disagreeing with me yesterday, which is all good, man. It's fine, but uh, all right. Peace out. Comment, like, subscribe. I appreciate all you guys. Love ya. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Peace.